Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I'm spending some time this week with the 2016 Nissan Titan XD with the Cummins turbo diesel. Now, I've already test driven this truck a couple of times and we have a few technicals that we've done on this engine, but this is the first time I've actually had this truck for an entire week. And what that gives me the chance to do is take it out on the roads I'm familiar with and that desert washboard road, a little bit of off-roading and really get a feel for what this truck is like to live with every day. And that's important if you're shopping for a vehicle. So here's what I found out. The Nissan Titan XD is Nissan's first reach past the half-ton class, but not all the way up to the three-quarter-ton heavy-duty status. With a longer wheelbase and a thicker frame than their own half-ton model to be introduced soon, the Titan XD currently comes only in a crew cab with a six-and-a-half-foot bed. Our SL trim grade tester has four-wheel drive and comes with 20-inch alloy wheels. It's got chrome bumpers and grille, fog lights, HID headlamps, and you can see the radar sensors for its parking assist feature well. The XD differs from the standard Titan in that it has a steeper front end, slightly taller and longer to accommodate the cooling apparatus for the Cummins turbo diesel V8. There's also telltale emblems up front bragging on what's under the hood. At the rear is a soft open tailgate with integrated backup camera. Taillights feature a handy trailer light checking program operated by the key fob so you can run it through the brake light and turn signal sequence to check your connections without having a buddy to help. The bed has a standard spray-on bed liner to go along with a standard aluminum rail cleat system that's pretty darn comprehensive on the sides, the front, and on the floor. There's also LED bed lining and built-in gooseneck and fifth wheel trailer hitch mounts. One thing I want to point out real fast before we get to the interior is that this has a pretty high ride height for a 4x4 and I noticed that after only a day of driving that getting in and out of this thing there's actually a pretty high step up here. As you can see, now I'm under 5'10", and if you are too, I might suggest that side steps or running boards might be a pretty good option. The interior of the SL is well outfitted with heated leather seats up front with memory for the driver. Trims are black with tan stitching accents along the dash, the center console, and the door panels. Also here is the top-end Rockford Fosgate audio system with touchscreen navigation. The console has an adjustable cup holder block that can be moved and a deep well storage bin below it. Infotainment connections are above it, as are the trailer brake controller, start button, seat heating switches, and HVAC controls. Sitting back here in the back seat, like many full-size cabs, plenty of room as you can see. Now these seats are not all the way forward or back. I've got plenty of space, so if there was a really big guy up there, uh, they could come back a little bit further before I started feeling the squeeze. Headroom's very good. Now the one thing I will point out is, very similar to a lot in class, this seat cushion here is a little bit lower than it could be. As you can see, my knees are perched up just a little bit. And the other thing is, is this seat is actually a little bit narrow here. As you can see, there's a pretty good deal of space here. So if I were a kid, I'd feel like I was really in this seat, but most adults are gonna be feeling like they're sitting on it. Now there are HVAC vents here and a power port, no USB ports. Now, one other thing I wanna show you with this is this seat actually has some very high levels of configurability, high levels of configurability. Have a look. Like most all trucks, the rear seat can fold down in a 60-40 split, but in any number of ways. The backs can fold down for a flat carpeted deck, but you also get the choice to fold the bottoms upward for a tall storage area. And here, you can fold out a lower panel that gives you a perfectly flat floor. And if that wasn't enough, underneath are two lockable storage compartments, all of which makes this one of the most versatile rear seats in the full-size truck class. Front seats and seating position are very well laid out, offering ease of adjustment and just enough support that long days behind the wheel are a snap. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes, of course, and has all the controls you need for the instrument cluster and the infotainment system. In the end game, I have to tell you, I like this interior quite a bit, not only because it's got a simple design, but it's well put together. The quality and the fit and finish, you just get the sense it's going to last. And I like a lot of the versatility features in here, particularly that back seat. That was pretty impressive. I think one of the top in class. I like this configurable console down here. If I had any complaint whatsoever, it's that the trailer brake controller could be maybe a little more accessible. If you're rolling down a hill with a trailer really fast and you want that trailer brake, you don't want to have to be looking for it or hunting for it, especially at night. But that said, I still think this is one of the best interiors in the business. I give it five stars. 
The infotainment touchscreen here offers straightforward menus and usage, and more important, features hard buttons and knobs for the most used features. There's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto yet, but audio quality from the Rockford Fosgate backend is exceptional. All in, the technology score comes in at 4 or 5 stars. Under the hood is what's been getting the new Nissan Titan XD all the attention. It'll be available with the new 390 horsepower 5.6 liter gasoline V8 very soon. But here we've got the all new 5 liter Cummins V8 turbo diesel. It offers up 310 horsepower and 555 pound feet of torque and comes mated exclusively to an AZEN 6 speed automatic transmission. And here it drives the wheels through a part time 2 and 4 wheel drive transfer case. All right, since we're talking about what it's actually like to live with this truck, this is a screen right here on the instrument cluster that if you own one of these things, you would see this screen every so often. It's the screen letting us know that the diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, is getting low. Here's the dope on the DEF. Now, this is my first time actually buying diesel exhaust fluid as a consumer, and I learned a couple things, and it shouldn't have been news to me, but if you buy it at your gas station, and most gas stations have it, you're going to pay roughly twice as much as you should. I got this at Walmart or any other big box retailer. Probably going to be a similar experience. I paid $7.88 for it. The gas station, it was $16. Bucks. Now, if I had an owner's manual on this, which I don't because this is a pre-production truck, it would probably tell me to go to my Nissan dealer only. You don't have to do that. All this stuff is the same, provided it meets the standard, which is a 32.5% mix of urea, which is a synthetic ammonia mixed with still water. Uh, if you get the same mix, it's going to be the same all around. And so basically this comes, in this case, it came with a little bit of a filler tube here, which I will use right here. And on this truck, it fills right next to where your diesel fuel goes. Now, how much do you need? On this truck here, the information that I have tells me that it uses 2% of fuel usage. Now, in this case, I'm getting 15 MPG this week with a truck, city highway, a little bit of both. Based on that, this would use 1.3 gallons for every 1,000 miles. And so with four and a half gallons of storage here, that would mean that if I own this truck and that's the MPG I was getting, this would have to be refilled every 3,500 miles. Now, if you tow, if you drive city all the time, that's going to be probably higher. If you just drive highway miles all the time, it really matters about how you drive the truck, uh, depending on how it uses this stuff. So basically, it's just something you're gonna have to live with. If you drive a diesel pickup or any diesel vehicle today, this is part of life. Are we ready? Full speed ahead. And 60. 310 horsepower, 555 pound-feet of torque. That sounds like a lot, but this is a very heavy truck, so that wasn't exactly hyper acceleration you just saw and heard there, but that's not what a truck's about. It's about towing, it's about hauling, and so in that regard, it does a good job. It's got good ratings in those areas, but if you're driving around town and you're trying to win a race, this isn't going to get you there. This has plenty of power. It's adequate for around town driving, and it'll give you a little bit of a kick in the back, but it's a big diesel pickup truck. There are four. It's not about speed. Now, one thing I do want to point out, though, is the engine sound. As you heard there, it's not noisy. It's not terribly loud. But like right now, I'm going down the highway now at highway speed, 60 miles an hour, and I'm turning about 1,500 RPM. And at this speed, you can still hear that this is a diesel engine. A lot of trucks, like the Ford, the GMC, they have so much sound deadening, they're very hushed at highway speed. And so they've tuned them such that when you're going at highway speed, you really wouldn't know you have a diesel unless you rolled into the throttle and got a little bit of power going there. Here, they still let you know you've got a diesel. As you heard me say, I averaged 15 mpg this week in my driving, which was roughly 50-50 city and highway. No towing or hauling. Because of the weight class this truck falls in, there are no EPA numbers to compare that to. I can tell you, though, by anecdotal comparison, I achieved 15 mpg recently in my test of the Ford F-350 Super Duty with a 6.7 liter power stroke diesel, and I got 17 mpg with a GMC Sierra 2500 with a Duramax, both crew cab trucks. So, seat of the pants tells us that mpg isn't necessarily higher than the larger trucks. Still, I like this engine's medium size and power range, which allows for a diesel option in a truck not so heavy duty and expensive as a full blown three quarter ton or one ton option. It's smooth, refined, and powerful, earning it four or five stars. 
When it comes to pavement handling, I'm out here on one of my favorite back roads here, which is not the smoothest when it comes to pavement. It's actually got a rough surface, but it's not bumpy or anything. It's just not a smooth pavement. It's got a few curves in it. It's a great place to see how the chassis tuning is, how the steering is, and what the overall ride's like. And so what I'm finding out here is that we're in a heavy duty truck. It's got a stiff suspension. Not so stiff though, like I'd find in some of the three quarter ton and the one ton trucks, but it definitely feels more solid and heavy duty than a half ton truck. Now steering, recirculating ball hydraulic steering, very traditional, not rack and pinion steering like you're gonna find in some of the lesser duty trucks. And so it feels heavy, it feels slow, takes a little bit of turn in on curves and you certainly don't want to throw this truck into a curve too quickly because it's big and heavy and so it's going to react as such but that's really what you want in a truck when it comes to steering you want something that's not too quick and flittery because if you have a really big heavy trailer back there you don't want big quick inputs you want something that's got a nice slow reaction to you and requires you to really sort of focus on the job and uh, give some smoothness to the whole thing now this wouldn't be one of my test drives if I didn't bring this out to the desert washboard road, which is always a great way to see how well put together the chassis is, how well tuned the suspension is, and how tight the structure is. And that's because even though this isn't heavy off-roading, this ribbed vibrating surface can make even some of the best vehicles out there feel like a complete pile. And so what I'm finding out here so far is that we're in a heavy duty truck. I've got pretty big wheels on here, so not a lot of rubber insulating me from this vibrating surface. Here in the interior, I'm getting a little bit of uh, shaking around. I can see it in the hood a little bit. Some of the interior pieces are rattling just slightly, but not too badly. How does this rate against the competition? That's really the big question because I've driven most of the competitors out here in the last year. Ford definitely more rattlesome. Chevrolet rides much stiffer, a lot more harsh out here. The Toyota Tundra, I put this ride on par with that. It had a nice solid chassis, just like this does, just went over cattle guard there. And what I mean by nice solid chassis is, I'm not getting any shuddering or rattling in the suspension, and that's the key element here. The only bit of rattle or shudder that I'm getting anywhere really has to do with some of the interior trims here, and it just isn't that bad at all. Moving off the washboard road onto a more off-road trail, this is a little bit more challenging, though still we're not rock crawling here. We're in a big heavy truck. It's not an off-road vehicle per se, but this is a little bit more of a, a challenging trail here. And what I'm finding is that it takes a little bit of manhandling. This is slow steering. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but not a bad thing. It just takes a little bit more work. It's not quite as light like you'd find a small SUV to be. Now this is a pretty rough road out here, a lot of rocks and boulders, some ruts and whatnot, and so I'm finding that the ride out here isn't too bad at all. It's still pretty stiff, but it's not harsh. When I'm hitting these bumps and they're crashing up, they're not crashing up, they're just sort of hitting the bump stops a little bit, and it's actually pretty well isolated, at least in a rubbery kind of way. Like right there, I just, I've just bottomed out on the suspension hitting a pretty big bump there, and it wasn't tooth jarring at all. So out here, this is something that if you lived in a rural area and you drove out in the backcountry quite a bit, uh, this is actually pretty comfortable. And the other nice thing is, and one of the reasons I've always liked diesel engines is it just sort of idles along out here. You don't have to really give a lot of throttle inputs. It just rolls along. Even though the Ram 1500 pickups with their full coil spring suspensions are top of the light truck game and ride, the Nissan Titan XD comes across right up there with them in terms of refinement, stopping just short of the heavy duty harshness found in some three quarter ton trucks. It earns five of five stars in the chassis department. When it comes to quality feel, the Nissan Titan XD really flies in the same stratosphere as the Toyota Tundra, which exhibits a tight level of fit inside and out, good paint work, and a higher quality of interior materials than most. Overall, Quality score comes in at five of five stars. Well, friends, wrapping it up for the Nissan Titan XD, as I said at the outset, I've test driven this a couple of times, and this actually was on our test driven TVI buy it list for 2015. Now that I spent an entire week living with it, learning all the ins and outs, 
I'd still buy it. It goes on the I'd buy it list for 2016 as well. And the reason why is if I were shopping for a full-size diesel-powered pickup truck, I like the fact that it's in that medium range. It's a little bit heavier dutier than a half ton heavier dutier. And it's also a lot less expensive and not quite as big and heavy as a three-quarter or one-ton truck. I just, I really like the packaging that they've done here. And when you put it in with the quality that's here as well as the equipment for the price, I think we're at a good value. And in that way, this one here, we're at $56,000. You can spend a whole lot less on this truck. And of course, you can spend more with other trim grades. But if you look at getting into a three-quarter ton or a one-ton diesel pickup from the big three and equipping it virtually the same, you're going to spend quite a bit more money on balance. So I think it's a good value in that way. Therefore, five stars is the value. And when you put that in with everything else we've already talked about here, we're at four and a half stars for the week. Very good. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. A little personal story in a galaxy far, far away, which was my younger life. I used to be a car salesman and one of the different brands I sold was Nissan. And I worked at a dealership in California, Fairfield Nissan. It was a hellhole, and not because it was a Nissan dealership, it was just the owners were creeps. The place was just a terrible, terrible place to work. And if you were a customer, well, nobody got out alive. Anyway. The thing that struck me most about selling Nissans was how loyal Nissan customers were. And as an example, one day I had this very elderly gentleman come in. He had a Nissan Sentra and he's coming to buy a new Sentra. And the car that he brought in was his old car. It was at least 10 years old at the time. And he cleaned it up. He got it all detailed because I think he wanted to make sure he got a good dollar for it on trade-in. And he showed it to me, he gave me a walk around, and he was so proud of it. He was telling me how he's owned Datsuns before, and he had a pickup, he had a B210, and then he got this Sentra. And he opened the hood, he showed me the engine, he had it all cleaned and detailed, told me what a good engine it was, and he was just very proud of this car, and he wanted to get a new Sentra very badly. Now, he didn't end up buying a new car for me that day, but I'll just always remember that when it comes to Nissan, when I think of the brand. Anyway. If you like the test drive you just saw, click on the link right here on your screen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I test drive one, sometimes two vehicles every week. Plus, I have a new video almost every day. There's always something new. So stay tuned.